Uh, I'm a neuroscientist by training, and, and what I'd like to do is, is introduce you to my world and how I perceive things as, as a neuroscientist as I, as I move through my, my daily life. I am very proud of my, my family, and I'd like to introduce you to my family. I've, you know, my, my stunning and, and beautiful wife, my handsome son, Paolo, and my, my beautiful princess, daughter, Berlin. So we also have a cat. And <laughs> I, I only see a neuron when I, when I see my cat. And, 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 and that's, that's a single neuron, because as, as a neuroscientist, I, I would say that he's one neuron short of a synapse. And, <laughs> And, and, and really, uh, yeah, let's understand uh, that. We have a, you know, a, a typical neuron over here which has a cell body. And connected to that cell body are these dendrites, which comes from the, the, the Greek referring to tree. And these, these branches off of the cell body, these dendrites, is how a cell is going to receive information. And, and that information is going to come into that cell body then and then travel down here towards, uh, towards this transition area where the cell is going to make a decision whether or not to pass on that information. If it does, that nerve impulse will travel down that axon, down to the axon collaterals, these teledendria, where they'll then communicate with another cell. If we, um, if we illustrate that, you know, we, can, we can see here how the axon of one neuron would be passing on its information to the dendrites here, where we have receptors over here that, that will receive those neurotransmitters. And then that information, again, will either die with the cell or it'll get passed on to uh, two other cells. We have about 100 billion of these cells in our brain. Each one of these cells, on average, can make about 10 to 20,000 different connections. We have some of these cells that can make up to 200,000 connections. Imagine 200,000 people yelling at you, telling you what to do, and then having to integrate that information and make, it, make an informed decision on what to do and what, uh, how to pass that information on. That's what's going on. So these 100 billion cells are making about 100 trillion connections. It's a number that escapes me. It's just a nice one to throw out there and roll off the tongue, but I really can't comprehend what 100 uh, trillion uh, might, might mean. So uh, they're, they're not the only cells in the brain. We have a lot of other glial cells in the brain. And, and one type of glial cell that we'll talk about today, the most numerous glial cell, is called the astrocyte. So astro means star, and cyte means uh, cell. So this star-shaped cell. And, and certainly you could see with the, the antibody staining that's done to visualize the cell, which is called GFAP, it's the best marker that we have for astrocytes. You can, you can, uh, uh, you can, it's a great marker to see these cells. And you can see that it does look uh, star-shaped, but really what we're looking at is the skeleton here of the cell. And I am more than my skeleton. And, and I also, uh, while it does look like a star, I tend to look down a lot more than I look up, as I am a scientist. I'm just, you know, nerd shuffle down the hall. And, 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 and so I, I tend to see things like, like uh, bushes more than I do stars. And, and, and this is really what it looks like when we, we stain with that, that GFAP. But more recent advances in technology are allowing us to see the full body of this, of, of this cell. And then we can appreciate, sorry, we can, uh, <laughs> we can appreciate how this, how this cell looks. And when we do that, just by simply appreciating the shape of the cell, we can see these green uh, GFP, uh, green fluorescent protein astro astrocytes there in the cortex uh, of a brain. And, and we can appreciate that they have a bunch of little holes in them that look like that Swiss cheese. Inside those little holes in the Swiss cheese holes are sitting the cell bodies of neurons. And these astrocytes, we can see, are not overlapping with each other, but they'll come up next to each other. And they'll form connections so that they can communicate rapidly with each other. But then they also are unwrapping a, a dozen or so of these, these cell bodies of neurons, creating these little micro niches in the brain where they can help modulate neuronal activity, and, you know, which we could... Uh, you know, we, we could even visualize here how we have these neurons coming in and, and an astrocyte uh, modulating that activity here. All of these cells are going to come together, lots of other cells are going to come together to form a brain. And, and our, our, our brain is, is so, so fantastic that it wants to see itself in other structures that, as, as we walk around our day. Whether you're looking up at the sky at a cloud or looking down at, at the sidewalk in the parking garage, uh, you, you'll see, you, can, you can see images of, of, of the brain every, everywhere we look. Uh, I should tell you that I tend to see animal brains, but you know, don't, 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 don't judge me. We all have our fetishes. And, 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 and so uh, you know, we can see things like the, the olfactory bulb in, involved in smell. We can see things, uh, uh, these, these olfactory bulbs have a high, uh, when we have an odorant detected on these cells, uh, then these axons are going to have a really high degree of convergence 
as they're going to come through the bone to the synapse on the brain, forming a connection with the brain, much like these palms do, you know, having this high degree of convergence of, you know, over here for that, for that olfaction to occur. We can also see structures like the cortex, which gives us our, our higher cognition and, and intellect. We can see the cerebellum, which is very vulnerable to alcohol. And this is one of those structures that helps you with your posture and stability and, and providing feedback from, from, from your body. Uh, that cerebellum is connected to the spinal cord and the rest of the brain through the structure called the pons. We also have the medulla, which is uh, involved in, in several things, uh, a couple of them which being uh, in heart rate and respiration. We have these, this complex there called the pre-Botzinger complex, which is going to send electrical impulses down to your diaphragm so you don't have to think about breathing. And that'll take care of that, that uh, for you. And then we have the spinal cord, which is a, really just a continuation of the brain that's going to go down and send these nerves out uh, so that we can respond to our environment. Uh, we can you know, receive information from the environment and then send commands back out. Uh, this was uh, an image taken outside of, uh, outside of uh, the building where I, I, I work. I'd, I'd, I had nothing to do with, with uh, uh, creating this, but it was just really there one day when I was walking, uh, walking by. And it, it helps us il illustrate the different lobes of the of the brain. So every, every once in a while I do tend to see a, a, a human uh, brain as well. Sometimes I just see a dead frog. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, but maybe a brain uh, over, over here. Uh, it, tonight when you go out I encourage you to look out at the stars and, and perhaps you might see this constellation uh, if you're leaving the, the bar late at night. Um, uh, my, my wife tells me to go swim with the fishes uh, a, a lot, and, and, and if you do, then, then you might see something like a brain coral. In the uh, uh, brain coral, we can see these worm-like convolutions on, on, on the brain, and, and these worm-like conv convolutions are called gyri, and they're separated by these grooves called, called sulci. Uh, or even when you're coloring with your, with your kids or, or you know, you know, by yourself, I don't judge, right? <laughs> Uh, you, 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 you might you think of just coloring, but, but it, also you might, you might think of the newest advancements that have been made in these in the rainbow uh, you know, mice and these Drosophila, which help us really appreciate the beauty of neural circuitry. So, uh, you know, my wife recently tried to make me eat cauliflower, and, and um, uh, just uh, some reminders of uh, what are those worm-like convolutions called? Gyri, right? You can see those gyri on, the, on, these, on these cauliflower, and, and they're separated by those grooves called what again? Those, those sulci, right? And, and uh, uh, then, then there's also another structure here. See these little things here? This is the, the primary motor cortex. There was a guy named Dr. Harvey uh, Cushing who, who mapped out doing electrical stimulation on the human brain, and he, and he mapped out how, how uh, weak stimulation in this area can elicit uh, body movements in patients. And just behind that, separated by this line here called the central sulcus, this is going to be the primary somatosensory area. If you give weak stimulation here, a patient will, will have, have feelings of sensation across the different parts of, of their body that are repre represented on that, that, uh, that, that brain. So there are some, some brain foods that, that are enticing to eat, such as homemade jello or cupcakes or even, even healthy uh, walnuts, where when we look at this walnut, again, we can see that, that primary motor cortex separated uh, with the central sulcus from the primary somatosensory cortex and even the cerebellum back here again involved in our, our, our motor coordination. Uh, unfortunate traumatic brain injury. Uh, now, uh, one of the, the least appetizing portions of the brain but one of the most beautiful is the cerebellum. So the cerebellum we can, uh, we can visualize here and, and this white matter in the cerebellum this is called the arbor vitae. Arbor vitae means tree of life. Cauliflower is not the tree of life. Um, in fact, I just, I just really have to go, go back and tell you that why do we eat cauliflower? One reason I think we might eat cauliflower is because you notice they, they don't have that primary motor cortex. They're not very fast, and, and, and it makes it a lot easier to catch. But I, I encourage you to, to try harder and, and, and go out there and uh, work, work more for your food. Some of you are looking at me like this with this facial expression, but that's okay. <laughs> That's okay, because, because when I see this facial expression in the brain, I tend to think of Oktoberfest, and that, that makes me happy. Uh, there are other images in the brain. When you look at a human brain, as you're cutting a human brain, you'll see this image of surprise. Oh, you're cutting me. And then, and then you, get, you might get a, a, start to get a little upset look you know, prior to getting an angry look. And this very angry look coming from, from somebody that has this kind of an 
80s, perhaps, uh, rock hairdo, uh, which <laughs> you can appreciate here. As you get farther back into the brain, uh, you will find these areas here that, that uh, this is a superior colliculus involved in things like uh, visual reflexes here. And as you get farther back there into the brain, then you start thinking about perhaps taking a vacation, such as going to uh, Disney World. And you know, I, I, I hope, uh, you know, if nothing else, I might make you see the world a slightly different way. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs>